Hi guys, I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing. Today I want to talk to you about saving for college and how good investing can really help you do that well. So over the years, college expenses have climbed like sickeningly higher way faster than the cost of living, which is really an interesting phenomenon, right? Why would that happen? Seems like with the cost of a four-year degree kind of running about $22,000 per year across public and private colleges, you kind of go like, what in the world has happened here? I mean, if you think about it, when I, I mean, I'm back in 1972, I started going back to college and I could pay for college off of a part-time job and you know get through okay without a lot of debt. And I'll tell you, man, you can't do that anymore. I mean, where are you gonna go out and earn $22,500 working part-time? It's just not gonna happen. And what's happened is we've ended up with a huge amount of debt that kids are in trouble. And now a lot of people that would have gone to college are thinking twice about going there. My nephew is like, I'm gonna do a year at a community college, work hard on, uh, on a skill set, and then I'm gonna to go to work because I would rather do that than put $100,000 of debt out there and then have to pay it off. I mean, that's a house, right? So let's think about this. The importance of having a college education is bigger now than it was even 30 or 40 years ago. And if you're gonna go in any kind of professional career path, you got to have a college degree. In fact, you got to have more than a college degree, right? So for these combined reasons of, you know, a lot, lot more money and the, the, the importance of having a college degree for anybody that's going on a career path, um, it's critical that you start to effectively put money away early. You don't want to come out of college with $100,000 of debt. And saving for college really presents some unique challenges. It's really tough. And overcoming these challenges requires a sound investing strategy for a couple of reasons. Number one, we don't have an infinite amount of money to put away. It's tough. And you gotta start saving for college when your kids are little, right? And second, if all we're doing is saving for our kids' college, we're not taking care of us for our retirement. And that's a really big problem. So one of the biggest challenges for saving for college is the fact that you're gonna be working on a very specific condensed timeline. Most students start attending college around age 18. So that means if you start saving the day your child is born, you've got 18 years to get enough money, or maybe 19, to save up enough for your kid to go to college. And if you're a student saving for college yourself, <laughs> good luck, because you're probably 16 years old already, go out and get a job, and in two years, you gotta come up with 100 grand. That's gonna be a good trick. So, you know, you're saving for college. Now, you also gotta save for retirement, right? So, it's incredibly important you start saving as soon as possible. And here's the thing. If you're gonna have children, then you gotta start putting money away now. I mean, you maybe start putting money away, you know, the moment you get out of college and start a job. Saving for college as a student's tough. Saving for college for your kid while you're saving for retirement tough to nearly impossible, and what that's done is led to an incredible amount of student debt. And these graduates are now dealing with it when they graduate. I know people who are medical doctors who have so much debt, they're not really worried they're gonna be able to pay it back, but the problem is they're looking at a decade of not being able to do anything except practice medicine, work 60 to 80 hours a week, and eventually get that debt paid off from going to college and going to med school. This is crazy. This is crazy, okay? And I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit bitter about what the government has done that's created this insane cost of going to school. Far, far greater than the cost of living. But let's just talk about basically how you deal with it and then maybe we can figure out someday how to fix the problem for everybody. So you know that every little bit counts when it comes to reducing the amount you have to take out in loans. That's an absolute fact. So anything you can do is helpful, right? Now, one popular way to save for college is a college saving plan called a 529 plan. And these plans, they make it really easy to put money aside. And if you have a financial advisor, they're gonna tell you about it. But if you don't, and most of you don't, right? 
then you're gonna have to know about it yourself. It's a tax sheltered investment, which means that the earnings are not taxed inside the 529 plan in whatever you're investing in, as long as the money's used to pay the educational expenses of the plan's beneficiary, your kid, okay? Now, with that said, you also in the 529 plan have this really cool ability to change the beneficiary of the plan at any time. So if your first kid decides they're gonna not go to college, you can shift it to child number two. That's just pretty kind of cool. Or if you don't use it all up, man, that would be perfect, right? Then you can shift it over to child number two. Hey, while well, these 529 plans have really some great advantages in terms of their tax protection, they also have some drawbacks that you gotta consider. For one, the plans limit you to just a couple categories of investment. You can invest in indexes and mutual funds, you can invest in bond funds, and you can invest in just bank deposits. What you can't do is pick individual companies. And this is not ideal when what we're trying to do is work within a condensed timeline where we need a much higher return probably than what we're gonna get from just index type investing. College 529 plans also limit you to how to spend the money that you save. Since there's no guarantee that you're gonna have a child that wants to go to college, this, this could be a drawback. However, you can definitely use a 529 for vocational schools. So it's a bit of a drawback in terms that it limits you to some kind of accredited institution. That institution could be a vocational school. So here's the thing, college savings plans are really worth looking at, but in a way, they provide you with some problems that you don't have if you just take after-tax money and go out and invest it. Because think about it, you're still putting after-tax money in a 529 plan, you're not getting to write it off. It's just within the plan, you grow the money without taxation. Well, we can do that same thing with some really good long-term investing, right? We're gonna grow that long-term investment and we end up with some taxation at the end, you know, however many years later, 15 years later, but it's at the lowest taxable rate. Now, the principles of rule one investing allow you to compound your money much more quickly than you can do if you just spread it across the whole market. And for that reason, rule one investing is ideal for the kind of constrained timeline that you have in terms of saving for college. Now, if you put your money into great companies that you're buying at 50% off, 18 or 19 years will provide stunning levels of return. Though it's still important, you gotta start as soon as you can. If you're looking for the best way to start investing, which you can build into something that will really pay for your kid's education, I'm really going to encourage you to explore the benefits of investing on your own using rule one strategy, the way we're taught by Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett. So I want you to just think about this for a second. If you're able to buy a company at a 50% discount to its value, and within three or four years, that company goes back up to what it's worth, guess what? You just doubled your money in three or four years. That means you're nailing a rate of return of 18 to 26% a year. Now think about it, if you start putting away, let's say, maybe you could put away $1,000 a year for 18 years, and you're compounding that initial $1,000, doubling it every three years, what would happen? That first $1,000 becomes 2,000 in three years, six years it becomes 4,000, in nine years it becomes 8,000, 12 years it's 16,000, and in 15 years it's 32, and in 18 years, that initial $1,000 is $64,000, and you've just paid for three years of college, in today's prices anyway, with $1,000 you invested when that kid was born. Imagine now, if you do that every year, $1,000 every year, now maybe you're not compounding it at that high of a rate, but you can see, if you start to run the numbers with this, that getting a high rate of return allows you to both save for your retirement and have money there for your kids when they're ready to go to school. Isn't this worth some time to learn how the best investors in the world invest? So now I'd love to hear from you. Have you considered investing yourself in order to help save for college? And what did, did it scare you? Let's hear about that. Leave a comment below with your answer and I'll be sure and follow up with you. And thanks for watching you guys. Now go play. You guys, if you enjoyed this video and you think it was valuable for teaching you more about saving money and investing, handling retirement and college requirements, 
Just hit the like button and please share this video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the button on the screen for a free gift. Thanks again for watching.